Welcome everyone. Our next topic for discussion is evaluation and today we're going to have uh, Tim Brown share with us about evaluation and its importance in our networks and partnerships. And uh, Tim, thanks so much for being with us today. Would you take just a minute and introduce yourself and this lovely lady in the picture with you and then, uh, and then share with us about evaluation and how you see it as important for our networks thank and partnerships. Well, thank you, John. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad uh, glad to be here today uh, talking a little bit about evaluation. Uh, in, in the picture is myself and my wife, Susie. And um, for the last five to six years, we've been focused in the field of orality. How do we uh, communicate the gospel to oral cultures? And in that process, have been part of a couple of networks. And so what I'll be sharing with you today about evaluation comes um, some from my experience of being a facilitation team leader uh, with the International Orality Network and also some work that I've done in Tucson, Arizona, where we live, uh, with the network of, of mission agencies and churches who want to uh, partner for the gospel. Uh, I also have a business background. I, I came to missions work later in life. and. Um, as we go through this presentation on evaluation, you'll probably uh, pick up on a few things I learned in my business training about uh, uh, marketing and evaluation and research and surveys. So with, with that introduction, let's just dig into thinking about evaluation. And uh, one of the stories I love to share when I'm traveling uh, is, is from the Tower of Babel story in the book of Genesis. And it has a lot of different applications, but one is we think about evaluation today. We know it's a, a biblical process. God calls us uh, to evaluate and, uh, and adjust things. We see God setting his example many times in Scripture. And as we think of the Tower of Babel, we know that God came down and he looked at what man was doing and made an evaluation, you might say, and, uh, and he took action. He created all the languages that we have in, uh, in the world today. Um, so evaluation has a biblical basis, and it also has clearly a, a business basis in any process, and especially as we think about our networks. Um, as I put up on the screen, the, the action cycle, you know, we plan things, we implement, and then we need to evaluate because we're constantly thinking about what are we doing and how do we need to adjust, um, adjust our plan to be more effective. Uh, especially as we're thinking about networks. As we get started, I think we just want to make sure we we agree sort of on a definition of evaluation. And uh, when I went out and sort of looked, I, I picked a little bit from different places. But, you know, it starts with the systematic determination of progress and success based on vision and standards. And, you know, I've highlighted the key words there because, you know, systematic means it's intentional. It's not just something we leave to chance as we, we look at what our networks are doing or what our processes are doing. Um, and it does have to be based on vision and standards. And my personal experience in, uh, in networks and in business is if vision and standard aren't clear, then any type of valuation gets off track pretty quickly. And so every piece of evaluation or effort that we're going to do is going to start by making sure our visions and standards are clear. I mean, and this evaluation is always going to help us determine achievement and, and progress. Um, you know, have we achieved the vision based on the standards that we've agreed to? Are we making progress? Um, achievement and par progress are, can be two different things. And some people say, you know, I did an evaluation and um, we didn't achieve the goal. And, and so what, what then? And, um, well, you've measured the progress toward the goal. And, uh, one of the terms I like to use is it gives us a gap management. How do we manage the gap then between where we're at at this point in time when we did an evaluation and, and what is our goal? And of course, the whole purpose of evaluations is, uh, you know, to help us do, do course corrections. Have we achieved success? Does it mean we're ready to move on to the next project or what's next? Or do we just simply need to refocus and make new alignments in our, our vision? our standard, and most of all, our efforts. And now the reality is, is we're always evaluating. And, um, you know, the other day I was, I, I live in, in Arizona where it's very flat, and I was driving between two cities, and it was very windy. And I, I just 
was thinking about this presentation on evaluation, and, and I realized when the winds are strong and the pressure is strong, we're constantly making adjustments. We're constantly evaluating uh, the, the, the situation. And when things are, are calm, I, I make the same drive frequently. And when there's no wind, it's a, it's a piece of cake. But when um, the wind is blowing hard or the situation is difficult, I'm just constantly making a, a, a adjustments and and little evaluations in our lives. And so in our networks, we're in some ways, we're always informally evaluating uh, and adjusting. Um, because, of course, as this, this illustration is, is we're always wanting to aim, uh, correct our aim to the right target. Uh, and evaluations help us make sure we're aiming in the right direction and we're aiming accurately. So the bottom line for me is that um, in this this equation, you know, the the vision and the standards are essential to equaling good evaluation. How do we set the right questions to be asking, the right um, things to be evaluating, and uh, and so sometimes I think it's just important to remember before we start the evaluation to review the vision and the standards and, and make sure everything we're evaluating is taken back to the vision and the standards. Now the actual task, task of evaluation, uh, there are a lot of different tools as we think of, of uh, how to make evaluations. One of the most common are, are very formal surveys and they can range from um, things that are very expensive to accomplish. Um, and to things that are very simple, uh, internet tools. And, you know, the photograph I put up just reminds me to tell a story about a very formal evaluation we were working on in, in uh, the state of Bihar in India. Um, and it was a very expensive evaluation. Uh, the questions had to be written based on the goals and the targets and objectives. Uh, the, the people you see in the photograph were actually testing the survey as they prepared to go out and administer the survey. and um, to, to different people in this language group. And what we were trying to do was measure the impact of audio recordings uh, on uh, in spreading the gospel among a particular language group. And so this very formal process had a pre-survey and a post-survey so that we could look at change. You know, what was the situation when we started? Uh, where were we at when we ended? And so formal surveys are often um, complex and sometimes my experience in networks is a formal survey is something people are resistant to uh, because of cost or maybe resistant to because of uh, the complexity and the time that's going to be involved. What I found in, this, in the networks I've worked with is more often than not we're doing informal surveys with focus groups. You know, you have a people, group of people in the room and you're asking them questions, you're just noting their responses. Um, you know, maybe you use one of the online survey tools um, like like SurveyMonkey. Some of you may have, have looked at that in the past. Uh, that's a tool that I've used on several occasions with the Tucson Missions Network. Um, just a simple survey that we email out to members and get collect responses. But it's it's not really scientific and it's not really um, costly. It's just a simple way of of getting feedback because that really is the purpose of um, of the survey. So as we think about evaluations, you know, the, the first step is really making sure that the vision objectives and standards have been set. You know, is the facilitation team in agreement on the, the vision, and it could be the vision of the network, or it could be the specific objective of a project or some activity that, that's going on. And then what are the standards that we're going to measure? What are, what are we going to evaluate um, as, as we move ahead? And in a network, it's real important to have, have these visions, objectives, and standards been communicated uh, to the members of the network or the people that we're going to be surveying. Are they aware of what our target is and, uh, before we even start the survey? Next question we have to ask is what needs to be evaluated? What is it that we're trying to measure, either in terms of success that's coming or in terms of uh, changing our direction? You know, with the Tucson Missions Network, uh, we were seeing a decline in attendance in our meetings, and so I put together a little survey to to uh, find out why people weren't coming um, to our, to our meetings. And uh, it's interesting because the network has about 140 individuals that say they want to be a part of the network, but only 15 to 20 were showing up at a breakfast meeting. And 
And one of the things that we found out very quickly was most of these members of the network would never come to a breakfast meeting because of their busy schedules, because of where they lived, and because being involved in ministry, they traveled frequently. Um, now, one of the stories that came out of that, though, was I went to the group and said, you know, if we want to have a meeting with maximum attendance, we need to look at some other time uh, to meet based on the survey. And as often some, you know, can happen, <laughs> you, you do an evaluation, you get an answer, but some people in the facilitation team, they, they really didn't like that answer and they just wanted to keep having breakfast meetings because uh, that's what they wanted to do. And so as you think about evaluation, you have to prepare the leadership team for change. Um, if the evaluation shows we're on target and on task, that's great. But if it shows we need to make some corrections, are we willing to make corrections? And that's uh, you know sort of the last slide as we, we try and wrap up our time thinking about evaluation is the, the main purpose. Um, is the network on course? Are we uh, reaching our goals or even on the right direction? Sort of like when I was driving down the interstate and the wind would blow me off course. Um, I didn't want to be distracted very long. Uh, I'd, I'd get way off target if I, I didn't correct my course. And then that final question is, is if the evaluation identifies a need for correction, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to change? So uh, thanks for um, the opportunity and listening a little bit on my, my thoughts on evaluation. I hope they're uh, helpful to you as you uh, engage as facilitation team leaders. And that important role of, of setting vision, um, setting standards, and communicating to the network, and then uh, figuring out how to evaluate and how to correct courses. So thanks for listening. Tim, thanks so much for what you just shared about evaluation and for helping us really get a grasp on the magnitude of this. And obviously, in in a you know 10-minute presentation, we're not getting to that depth. So I had a couple of questions that I was wondering if you would uh, unpack a little bit more. One of the things that I really appreciated that you said was this difference between progress and achievement. Um, will you unpack that a little bit? Why is it important to look at progress, and, and what does that actually mean in the context of our networks? Okay, well, thanks. That's a, a good good question to, um, to, to dig into. Um, a lot of people get frustrated when their evaluation comes back and they haven't achieved their goal. Uh, they can't prove that they've succeeded. That, Really, that, that's really valuable information to the network, and it helps us engage in what I call gap management. What does the, the evaluation tell us we still need to accomplish? Um, what is the progress that we've made toward the goal? Um, and and that, so any evaluation we do is useful in helping us be more effective uh, in, in aiming and at our target. And in fact, that, that sort of leads to this question about how do you you know, how, somebody asked me once, how frequently do you evaluate? Um, and that is a, is a good illustration. If you've achieved your goal and your evaluation is saying you've accomplished, then uh, you're pretty much done with that type of evaluation. But if there's a gap, uh, that gives you a baseline to measure against. Um, it tells you that maybe three months from now we want to be farther along the road. Um, so the, the frequency of evaluations is really subject to what the situation is. Now, one of the recommendations I've always made to, to networks and for most activities is if you you need to do at least one every year, um, sort of get an annual picture, a snapshot of, of where the network is in reaching its, uh, staying on focus and staying on task to reach its goals. If you do it less than a year, you can get pretty far off track. Uh, then any correction is going to be more difficult. Um, so if you do them at least every year. Some situations, if it's really a difficult time, you want to do some kind of evaluation maybe every three to six months. Um, again, it just depends on the situation. That's great. And just last question, as far as communicating that back to the network when you haven't succeeded, how do you approach that? What What advice would you give to network leaders as far as uh, this idea of communicating back to the network when things haven't gone the way that you expected them to go? Well, the first first thing advice I would give is whenever you do a survey, especially of network members, uh, they're going to want to know what the survey uh, found out. 
How did because everybody wants to know how did they fit? Uh, you know, if I, I gave an example of um, the survey we did with the missions network and when do we meet, and people wanted to know. Um, I can attend a breakfast, but am I in a minority? Am I a majority? And so, whatever results you get, you want to be communicating them back. And then the the, the second issue is nobody likes to give bad news. Um, I, I worked in public relations. That was one of my biggest challenges. Sometimes is you know how do you deliver uh, results that aren't what you you wanted? And my experience in networks is people are happy to know. Uh, what the situation is, so it's better to tell them even if we haven't achieved our goal at the level. Uh, but what you need to think about as a facilitation team is if you haven't achieved your goal, then the members are going to want to know what corrections do we need to make, what changes in course, um, be because nobody's happy <laughs> when you haven't achieved a goal, but they are happy when you've got a plan. Uh, so I would just encourage you as leadership team and facilitation team members to always take responsibility for the results at some level and say, you know, we didn't achieve our goal, but this is what we think will help us achieve the next time we evaluate. Great. Thanks so much, Tim. And look forward to ongoing discussions about evaluation on Synergy Commons. Tim will be engaging in the conversation there as well. Uh, feel free to post questions, post your comments. What has your experience been about that? And uh, thanks again, Tim, for your time, and uh, look forward to this ongoing conversation.